Hey, good afternoon. Uh, good morning. Well, it's not morning. It depends on where. Depending on where you are, it might be morning somewhere. I mean, uh, certainly good afternoon uh, to those of you, everyone who's joining us today. Uh, this is Willie Cartwright with uh, from Save to Sane. I'd like to say thank you to everyone who's joining and who who's already joined and who will be joining us. Uh, great to have you today. Let me know if you can hear me. I see uh, Taisha. Thank you, Taisha. Hello. How are you, Taisha? Hope you're doing well. Uh, those of you who know that Taisha is uh, my partner in crime. Uh, she's she's in the chat room today. She won't be live with us. Uh, as I always say, she has so much stuff going on, but I am always appreciative when she's able to join us. She adds so much to uh, the conversation. And so uh, the way I always get started, I like to say always thank you to her. I am in debt to her for everything that she's done. I appreciate it so much and everything that she continues to do and the influence that she has on me and the push, the shove <laughs> that she's given me to, to get out here and, and do this. So I really appreciate that as well. So, uh, and then secondly, I always want to say thank you to uh, my backbone, my most supportive person in the house, my, my wife, uh, Salima Cartwright, who is uh, everything to me. And she is also uh, one of the reasons why I am doing this. Uh, she's behind the scenes, but she is a very powerful person and I love her dearly. So thank you to her uh, as well as Taisha. I see Sharon is on. Sharon, how are you, Sharon? Uh, hopefully you are enjoying the book. Uh, and uh, I would love to hear uh, comments. Uh, and it can be critical. I don't, it's, it is what it is. Uh, that's why we That's why we put the information out there. But I would love to hear your comments about the book. Um, I, I'm, I'm going to write a second one. Uh, so, uh, I don't know about soon, but in a few years. But yeah, uh, let me know what you think about the book, how much you've read and uh, uh, how you uh, would... Uh, uh, make it make the next book better. But uh, absolutely, thank you so much uh, for do joining us. So today, uh, <laughs> interesting, uh, we it is pouring down raining here uh, in Georgia. I'm in uh, just outside of Atlanta. I know Taisha is south of Atlanta. Uh, I don't know if it's raining there, but Sharon is in Arizona. I think so. It's always bright and sunny <laughs> in Arizona. But but Sharon, we are getting rain here. Uh, we've actually had rain almost every day for, for about a week here uh, in Georgia. So so if you hear anything, uh, that's the rain. You hear some background noise. That's the rain. But it's a beautiful uh, summer uh, summer rain. But anyway, so today I wanted to talk about uh, deconverting, deconverting from Christianity, deconverting from the church, just the whole term of deconverting, which is basically uh, unconverting from your religion. Uh, in my case, it was Christianity. Um, and so what does that look like? Uh, is there a process? Where do you find the uh, help? Uh, what do you go to for inspiration and, and those uh, people, organizations that can help you? So we'll talk about uh, exactly what it is, uh, deconverting, why we picked this topic today. Uh, and then there, to me, there's two types of deconverting. There's deconverting from the church, the physical church that you attend every Sunday, every Wednesday, every Saturday, and you know, all through the summer or whatever because of uh, vacation Bible school or revivals or whatever. And then there's uh, actually deconverting from the faith, whatever faith that be, whether it's Islam, Judaism, Christianity, of many of the other uh, religions out there. And so we'll kind of separate those and we'll talk about uh, deconverting from both of those as well. We'll also mention uh, some resources that maybe can, can help you, whether they be books or organizations or some podcasts uh, that you could take a look at. Uh, we also want to talk about uh, those of us who have deconverted uh, myself included, we want to talk about what you know, the reaction that we got from family and friends and, 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 and the uh, uh, community uh, as well. Um, and then I want to do something a little different. I want to take some uh, some questions about my uh, deconversion uh, or anything related to, to, to what we've talked about in the past, personal to me, and I'm kind of an open book. I'm more than willing to answer uh, answer those questions. So uh, I think we can kind of have that, uh, start that in like every podcast that we do because I, I enjoy kind of answering those questions. It gives you guys the opportunity to get to know me better. And it might touch on some subjects that some people have not, uh, have not addressed, but may have concerns about. So we're going to have a kind of a Ask Willie <laughs> a segment before this is over with. 
Uh, and you can ask me whatever questions related to what we've talked about. Again, I'm an open book. But let's begin. Uh, let me look at some of these comments first. Uh, Sharon said hello. Uh, let's see, Tron. Uh, what's that? Tron 7000. Hello. Uh, where are you from, Tron uh, 7000? Uh, Sharon said, uh, very, uh, very informative thus far. I'm, re react, I'm reading between uh, a lot of other projects right now. Arizona is 111 right now. I wish it would rain. Uh, Bay's Price, great, great to have you as well. Uh, Sharon, it's, uh, you know, my wife is from upstate New York and we went out, we go out west often because I love, I, I just love the vibe out west. But um, went to uh, Las Vegas and went to Arizona. Uh, we went to Arizona, uh, it was January, and it was 90 degrees <laughs> one year. So uh, we were in Arizona one, one year, uh, not Arizona, we was in Nevada one year, uh, late May, I think, and we woke up, and it was already 104, 106 or something to that effect. So uh, the dry heat to me, and I haven't been in it for an extended period of time, but uh, the dry heat to me, I, I, I think that I can tolerate it. I, I believe that I can tolerate it better than I can the humidity here in the South because it is just sticky and muggy and sweaty all the time. So I, I don't know. Um, I, I, again, I've lived in the, out West. Uh, I spent time out there, but I haven't over an extended period of time, especially not a full summer. But I just believe in my mind that I can deal with the dry heat more so than this humidity. This humidity just kills me. Uh, Tron Seven said that uh, they're from Dallas, uh, the Metroplex. Hey, and it's hot as hell. Absolutely. Um, uh, not not such a well known secret about me, uh, uh, Tron. I am a huge, huge cry when they lose. Have been a fan since 1975. Dallas Cowboy fan. I am a huge, huge Dallas Cowboy fan. So when anybody says they're from Dallas, I'm always like, oh, Dallas. Uh, never, never had the desire to live in Texas. Never had the desire to live in Dallas. Uh, I'm just a huge, huge cowboy fan. Growing up in Alabama, uh, they, they were on TV every week. And in between church services, when my mom would allow me to watch TV I, on Sundays, I would try to catch the Cowboys. But it was really hard because we would, you know, we would go to church all day, and and we would after. Uh, one o'clock service, which always ended at about two or two thirty, we would go to a neighbor's house or somebody who lived close to the church, and we would go there, and they would feed us, and I would try to catch some football with uh, the lady's husband, who uh, who and we talked about this before, who would never go to church, <laughs> but his wife and his daughters and the kids would always go to church, but he would just sit at home and watch football all day, and I was extremely envious <laughs> of him. Uh, he was an adult, grown man, but I was I was a child, but I just wanted to. See at home and watch football all day. But yeah, so I'm a huge Dallas Cowboy fan. Um, so you are a Michigan transplant, so I really don't like the cow. Oh, okay. Well, that's all right. <laughs> so anyway, let's get into what we're talking about today. Um, deconverting. So basically deconverting is the process of leaving one's faith or leaving the church. Um, something that we've, you know, a lot of us grew up in, been a part of for a long time. For whatever reason, we decide that we want to uh, deconvert because when you are a sinner and you become saved or you become part of a faith, they call that converting. So this is just the opposite. So deconvert, deconverting. And the reason why I wanted to talk about this today, because I think it's extremely important. I think there are uh, a lot of us out, out there uh, who are in the process, who are on this journey, who have questions, who have concerns. Uh, and there are others who have just flat out decided that they no longer wanted to be part of uh, either the church or the, the faith or, or, or both. And so that process of leaving is called deconverting. And it is not an easy process for many of us, depending on the level of indoctrination, um, the level of peer pressure around you, um, and the level of fear <laughs> that was instilled in you uh, through this process of indoctrination in the religion and the faith. It can be extremely, extremely difficult. There are organizations, and we'll talk about it later, but there are organizations out there that are strictly dedicated to helping people deconvert and get over all of the things that they went through while being a part of a, a, a religion. And so one of the things that I'm always careful about, always remind myself of, is why am I doing what I'm doing? And I oftentimes will get questions 
in a debate or a discussion with uh, a believer or even somebody who may not necessarily be a believer, but they will ask me, why are you doing this? And what's the purpose? And what's, you know, what's the end result? And I oftentimes will cite the issues of those of us who've been part of religion uh, or been a believer and tried to come out and the 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 uh, the, the amount of, uh, of of level of being ostracized that we that we deal with while coming out. But I think, but even what's even more important is the level of abuse and things that happen to us while we're part of these religious organizations and as a believer, whether it be the mental abuse that we get from the trainings and the teachings of you're gonna burn in hell, everything that you do is a sin. The girls or the women are blamed for every sin that 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 a man uh, uh, does, even the sin of even the sin of thought, the thought sins of lust or whatever. Um, but one of the things that I discovered even more so was as as I started this journey and as I broke away and began my deconstruction, I started, I became part of these forums and these boards where people would uh, just talk about their experiences in these churches uh, and the experience of leaving these churches. And growing up, I knew that there were a lot of abuse, physical abuse, uh, mental abuse, and I knew there were a lot of things that happened uh, under the church, within the church, from church members, from church people, leaders, ministers, pastors. But I had no idea that it was at the level that it was. When I started reading these forms, and this is just not, I mean, some of these are are what we would consider to be cults, you know, the real, the C-U-L-T cults, the real, the, the real ones. But, but a lot of this was just your mainstream churches that people attended every day. There was the local neighborhood church where the pastor abused or took advantage of young people and the kids or, or where a wife was being abused or, you know, it, it, it just, it, it, it happened. And so just the stories were riveting about the amount of abuse that these people took and, and, and what happened when they tried to leave. And we've talked about this on some of the other podcasts uh, uh, about the level of drama, a trauma and, and, uh, and drama within the, the, the church body, but trauma through the process while you're in church and through the process of leaving. So I thought that it was it was a good topic today and interesting for us to kind of talk about our own uh, deconverting and how this may help other people. And I think, first of all, number one, it's just the fact that, we're ha- that we have this platform and we're having this co- conversation about deconverting. I think that in itself is something that's going to help people who are listening or who may you know, listen to this at a later date. So understand that there are there are others like you out there. There are many of us out there who are who have deconverted, who are going through the process of deconverting, or who are actually thinking about deconverting. Uh, and all of our experiences will be different. But please understand that there is a family. There are people out here who call ourselves a family who are there for you. Uh, not just my platform, but a ton of other platforms. You can go on YouTube. You can Google deconvert videos. Uh, you can Google deconvert a deconversion podcasts and these individuals that go through this. There are books about deconversions. Uh, ironically, I, I've never read any of the books about deconversions, only only because uh, for me, the process of, for me was more about uh, uh, reading about information that this uh, uh, proved the things that I believe to be true, uh, confirmed those things. So as I started to deconvert, I had a lot of questions about um, the creation story and other stories in the Bible, the Exodus story. And to me, all of that information, uh, when I discovered that that all of that stuff, there was no validity to those stories, uh, it served as confirmation to me that this faith and this religion uh, was a, a, a big hoax, a big lie. And that I had been fed this all my life. So I didn't really need the the the, the whole deconversion videos to see. I just decided that, hey, the evidence is not there. All if almost if not all of the stuff that I've been taught about this faith is uh, and now I've done my own research, it is not true. Uh at least the research that I've done is not true. And and the other side of that is that I had spent 40 years hearing the other side. I had spent 40 years hearing why 
Christianity was the greatest thing in the world and God existed and all this other stuff. So I didn't need to spend another, you know, any amount of time hearing that again. Also, what I've heard for 40 years, nothing has changed. There are no more, there are no more arguments or better arguments out there now than there were 100, 200, 300, 40 years ago for the belief in God and, and being a part of any type of religion. That's that's just me. I know some of you who are listening may not uh, may be may be part of another type of religion or whatever, or still going through the process. But for me, for the research that I've done, I came to the conclusion that hey, what I've been taught was a lie. Uh, there is no empirical evidence of this Abrahamic God. Uh, most, if not all, of the major stories and major characters in the Bible never existed, and you can do your research archaeological evidence, none of that. There is, there is no archaeological evidence that proves any of these characters existed with the exception of maybe David. Um, uh, outside of that, the main characters and the main events, not only are there no empirical evidence that these events and these characters existed or happened, there is evidence, scientific evidence, that many of these events could not have happened. Uh, when we talk about the Great Flood, there is, there is conclusive evidence scientific evidence that we could not have had a great flood uh, over the earth. And so other stories like that. I mean, there's some there's some really common sense basic things that we know from just basic science. There's no way for a man to spend three days in the, the belly of a well and survive. Uh, we know that kind of stuff is not is not true. So yeah, so so absolutely. So when we talk about deconvert, I think it's important. And I'm gonna read some of these comments uh, so we can kind of keep it going. Um, Bay's Price, I have a question about leaving religion. I got out very slowly. My beliefs being chipped away over three decades. Three decades. Wow. Uh, seems uh, seems easier than those who get a sudden uh, shock. Less angrier. Your thoughts on that? I, you know what? That is, uh, I you. I think you really hit um, hit the hit the nail on the head. So my 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 process, uh, Bay's was uh, it was. Over the years, I had questions, but it, I, I, but I was still a committed, uh, I won't say devout, but I was still a committed believer. And and it, it, it wasn't sort of, it wasn't really all of a sudden, but it was it was sudden. It was more sudden than over a period of time. And, 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 and I was told that I would do this, but I did go through those stages. I, 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 at first, I was angry. And I think that's the stage that most people go through if they're, deconversion is abrupt right uh or there there are there are things that happen to us that that start the snowball effect of us deconverting and if those things are pow are painful enough then that as we start to deconvert the first stage is, is is anger so i did the whole anger thing i was and i'm not really sure who i was angry at uh, maybe I'm just mad at the process that I had spent so many years believing in something that now I believe is is, is not true at all. Uh, but I did go through the angry process, and I believe that if I if I had a, if it, if my deconversion had been like yours over a long period of time, maybe I would not have gone through that whole angry period. But I did it, uh, and so I I said some things and did some things uh, with people, especially believers. Uh, but I got over that, that that so I'm I'm way past the angry stage. But but that's a good point. I think that happens. Uh, Stephanie McGuire, hi, I appreciate your channel. Thank you so much, Stephanie. I appreciate having you here. Definitely. Uh, you said, I left when I finally got internet and I was uh, able to research stuff myself around 2014. I started around the age of 50. Wow. So I started, uh, I'm 53 now. I know, I know, I look, I look young right now. <laughs> Just kidding. No, I'm, um, uh, 53. So we, I, we left and my wife and I left in 2015. So that's about seven years ago. So I was, what, 45, I think, uh, close to 45. So, yeah. So better late than ever, in, in my opinion, better late than ever. So, yeah. So I'm glad. Yeah, absolutely. Um, the, the biggest, one of the biggest enemies of organized religion and uh, God, or the belief in God, is the Internet. Because growing up, and I don't, you and I, I don't know how old you are, but it, we're probably close to the same age age, age group. Uh, if you were is it, uh, six years ago, so you're a little bit older. Uh, but I think we're still in the same generation, basically. We grew up with not being able to really do the research ourselves, not not in an easy, not in an easy manner, put it like that. So it'd been a lot more difficult to do the research. But we also grew up in a generation where we were told not to question and where we were told to just believe 
what the pastor was saying. And so we put this pastor on a pedestal uh, and the teachers, the Sunday school teachers and all, all those people, because that's what we've been instructed to do. That's what we've been pushed to do. And, and until we got to the point where we could sit down and actually do the research ourselves easier than going to a library, checking out a bunch of books and, and all that, we could just put in a question or a subject and, and information comes up. Uh, that has become one of the biggest enemies of organized religion and the belief in God, because now people can go and do the research themselves. So if pastor says, if PASA, PASA says, says something on a Sunday morning that doesn't sound uh, correct, then we can easily, even, even right there in the church, we can pull out our smartphones and be like, okay, uh, so pastor said, no, 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 that doesn't jail. So yeah, so absolutely. So I, the internet has been great uh, for the deconversion of movement. Uh, and so I'm, I'm really happy and I wish that we all would continue. Um, beige, beige prices uh, was around the same age, Stephanie, uh, and high. Oh, and high. Cool. Uh, Sharon, uh, if it's possible to be spiritual, but not religious, the struggle with this is real. Yeah, let's talk about that. For, that's a fantastic question. And, 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 and candidly, uh, Sharon, that's a question that I struggle with as well. And here's the reason why. Um, I, I, if people ever, when people ask me for um, a definition of what I am regarding religion, I always say that I'm probably an um, agnostic atheist. And when I said that, I said meaning that uh, I am uh, atheist to the belief in any of the current gods that we know of. You know, everything that we've had, a thousand plus gods, right? But I am agnostic to the fact of the possibilities that there could be something out there beyond us, you know, beyond the physical, right? Uh, I know hardcore atheists that just flat out don't believe in anything that they would consider to be supernatural outside of the natural. Uh, I'm not necessarily one of those people. I believe there could be something because I, we don't know everything. Uh, and so to me, that's where spiritual spirituality come in, come into play. Also, I am a huge, huge, huge proponent of learning about our ancestral home in Africa and what our ancestors prior to the transatlantic slave trade, what they practiced, what they believed. Uh, I want to know, not that I will convert or become, you know, follow their practices. I just want to know because it 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 did it served them. Uh, for a long, long, long period of time, uh, and that's you know that's that that's not proof that anything exists, but that's they had something prior to Christianity and Islam and, uh, and the other Abrahamic faiths that that got introduced to them. So I'm torn between it. I'm really not uh, sure. I don't. I know what people mean when they say spiritual. Sometimes people say it just means a relationship with what they consider to be a higher power. What do they call it? God. Um, uh, my, my wife, who practices, who follows the Buddhist faith, uh, uh, and it depends on who you ask, it's not a religion, it is a religion, but she follows the Buddhist practices, philosophy. Uh, she will use God as just a term because everybody else uses it, but she doesn't believe in a traditional God at all whatsoever. Uh, but she just used that term to mean something outside of us, something more powerful than us. Uh, and so I know a lot of people that do that. So with you, I'm still searching and researching that. I don't I don't uh, go down that road as far as I don't call myself spiritual uh, at all, but I do respect and understand those who do. And I don't totally disconnect from that and say that's no, that's that doesn't exist because I don't know. Uh, the only thing I know for sure, or at least what I believe for sure, is that the Abrahamic God does not exist. And I don't practice any of those practices and believe in any of those those faiths that's attached to that and any of the other known gods or religion. So that's a great question. Maybe we'll do a topic on spirituality versus religion as well. Uh, so Stephanie said, uh, did I miss some? I missed a lot, right? Uh, uh, let's see. Where are we? Um, well, uh, let's see. Stephanie said, well, I'm in Texas. Grew up going to vacation Bible school. Been there, done that. <laughs> Grandma taught mom, played piano. Uh, your ordinary country life. Absolutely. Uh, Stephanie again said, yeah, I'm spiritual still. I still have a soul. Uh, that's a good one, too, because I haven't been able to have anybody who can define what a soul is to me. Uh, that's one of my issues, I guess, with spirituality is like, what exactly is a soul? 
Uh, again, not saying that that is no such thing, uh, that it doesn't exist. I just want to know how we define it because I know people define it in different ways. And it might be one of those terms that is not easily definable. So I would ask, you know, what is a soul? Uh, so we'll go from that. Base Price uh, said, Sharon F., uh, that was final step uh, to not believe in any anymore. Something out there, spiritual, then had to then had to let that go as well. Uh, yeah, Beige, I'm I'm closer to you when it comes to that, uh, the whole spiritual thing. I don't, uh, like I said, I don't follow any, I don't say I'm spiritual. I've I never been in that realm. I don't, uh, but again, I do respect people that do. I just, it's just too ambiguous for me. It's just too open for me. And it's one of these grab bag terms that uh, people just throw everything in. So for to me, so uh, with that, uh, Taisha, hey, my buddy Taisha, she commented, she said, uh, I became real militant, looking for debates and battles. Now I just direct my energy to those who are like-minded. So, um, Taisha, I'm I'm in the middle. Um, I do do a lot of debates with people. Uh, part of it is because it helps me to learn. Because what I do is, even though I don't read the Bible anymore, that kind of stuff. But when I come across a person who I'm debating or talking to, and they and they throw out a, 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 a issue that I'm not that familiar with or that I need to do more research on, it gives me an opportunity to do more research on that particular issue. And then I come back at them with the correct information, right? So so the debates serve two purposes. One is because I just like debating with people. Uh, two is because it helps me to learn. Actually, it helps me to learn more. And also I get a chance to figure out where these people are coming from, because as I've said before on these podcasts, this is what I'm doing or will be doing for the rest of my life in some form or fashion, whether I'm teaching this, whether I'm speaking, lecturing, uh, I will continue to have this podcast and other platforms to do this. So I'm trying to learn as much as I can. And so, so yeah, so I'm kind of, I still do, do the uh, debates. Um, uh, and I'm I'm kind of a confrontational person. I don't back down from a confrontation, especially when it's something that I know that I know, or at least enough of where I can uh, engage in an intelligent debate. Uh, so yeah, so I'm good with that. So yeah, thank you for that, Beige. I think uh, the something we sense uh, is our own subconscious. It seems to, uh, it, let's see, I need to enlarge this. It, it seems to admit, uh, and we can't really access it. But it pokes uh, it pokes our consciousness. Uh, I can I can see that I can get with that. I, I read a book that talked about uh, the soul and consciousness, and this is kind of what the author was talking about when he talked about the soul, the consciousness. This is exactly kind of what he was saying. Uh, and I have to find that book and, and get, get that book for you. Um, Stephanie McGuire said, "I don't believe uh, any church doctrine at all. Doctrine at all. Me either. Absolutely don't believe any at all." Uh, and this is uh, Beige is, is committing to Taisha and Taisha. I used to argue, but it is uh, expected that I should know every single science subject to do that. So gave up. Uh, too annoying. I was doing research, but not the uh, interlocutor. Inter inter interlocutor. Got you. <sighs> uh, this dude. Hey, I mean, the dude. Hey, the dude. You said I so is a living, breathing thing. Really? Um, how would you how would you prove that? What is living and breathing about it? How would you prove what what empirical evidence do you have uh, to do that the soul is a living, breathing thing? I need empirical um, evidence of that. Uh, I'm just curious, not saying that you're wrong, uh, and I said that you're right. I just want to know if you said that something is because uh, living and breathing is something that is objective, something that we can verify or that we can quantify. Right. So uh, where is your empirical evidence uh, that quantifies that the soul is a living, breathing thing? That that's that's my question. That's my only question. But thank you. for uh, Thank you for being here. I, I don't know if this is your first time. I don't remember seeing your name before, but I am so happy to have you here. Uh, the dude continue to join us, and any more comments, any more questions are 100% more than welcome. Uh, so Taisha said, Challenge accepted, then you finish them. <laughs> uh, you're right, facts change feelings, not the other way around. Absolutely, um, facts change feelings, and so when I have these debates with, with people, it, it, it always it, at the end of the day, it always ends up being okay, 
where is your empirical evidence? And I don't, I don't, I don't, the whole subjective stuff, or I, I have a feeling, or, you know, uh, anecdotal evidence because we here on earth, or because the birds sing, or because, you know, we have oceans, there must be a God. That's not empirical evidence of God, right? So uh, you're right. Uh, we need facts. Uh, and that's, and it's funny. I mean, I said this to a, a person yesterday on, on one of my social media platforms. Uh, we, we use empirical evidence to believe or understand everything else except when it comes to God and religion, right? And so why is that? You know, you can't make a person do anything, understand anything, unless you have proof of that particular thing. Uh, and for us to believe in anything else, we have to have uh, actual facts of it, except when it comes to disbelief in God or whatever faith or religion that we that we practice. So I find it to be ironic. Uh, you say, oh, I like the taste. So Stephanie McGuire said, I just believe we are more than physical. I believe there is a spiritual realm. I believe there is a divine source. Uh, Stephanie, you could you could absolutely be correct. Um. um and so I'm I'm good with that. I think some people who listen to me or engage in conversations with me, they kind of get confused because uh, I don't, my job is not to deconvert or convert anybody. Uh, I don't, me personally, it's not an issue in my life whether there is a spiritual realm or whether there is a, um, a, a, a afterlife. I, I really seriously don't engage in it. I, it doesn't, it's, it's not a concern of mine. When, when I die, what happens to me after I die or my spirit or whatever, if there's such a thing, my soul, uh, I am literally not concerned with that right now. I, I'm just not. Uh, maybe if I'm, you know, on my deathbed and I deal with thoughts coming by, but right now I don't consume myself with, with those, with those thoughts. So you could very, you could very well be uh, correct. Um, now when people come to me and say, you know, this is the facts, this is exactly, this is truth. And this is what we should be teaching everybody. Then my next question is, okay, where is your empirical evidence of that? You know, because I, we all, obviously we all are free to believe what we want to believe. Believe it or not believe it doesn't make it wrong or right. Uh, it just, it's just our belief system. Uh, but when we, when, we, when we implore that information and say that everybody should believe it or that it should be what we all believe or we should be teaching this, then I have a problem uh, if it's not backed up by empirical evidence. Uh, so yeah, so that's who we are. Um, Stephanie said, I believe religions are man-made control systems. And yes, they are. Uh, yeah, and then she said, yes, uh, I, don't, I do not believe in hell for anyone. Uh, I don't either. I don't, I, uh, that was the first hurdle. So in my deconstruction, and, and, and let's talk about that a little bit too, because we, we, we are talking about deconstruction. For those of you who are, who, who are considering deconstructing or in the process of deconstructing, uh, for me, for me, the first thing I had to do was to do my research on heaven and hell, more so hell than heaven, because hell is punitive. And so I had to try to understand, first of all, I had to try to, I asked myself a question, why would a all, supposedly all loving God who created us the way that we are, include, including the flaws, uh, and then he ended up turning those flaws into what we call sins, right? And because of those sins and, and our unwillingness uh, to fall on our knees and, and say he's our savior, why would this individual, this entity, create a place such as hell to torment us forever and ever and ever and ever and ever, right? None of that makes sense at all to me, makes sense to me whatsoever. And so as I started to deconstruct, the first thing I did was started to do my research on hell, the origins of hell, where it stemmed from, how we got it, one stage to the next stage of what started. And so when I, when, when I, when I became, when it became clear to me that the biblical hell was not a real thing, it made it a lot easier through my deconstruction process because now that punitive penalty was not hanging over my head. So if I'm, um, uh, so even if I was wrong, you know, well, I, I'm not gonna say because if I'm wrong, then I guess the hell is, is is real. But understanding that hell was real allowed me to say, okay, now, okay, I can kind of breathe because that whole fearful thing that I'm going to hell. Uh, was hanging over me. So once I got past that, and then I obviously realized that the biblical heaven is not real uh, uh, either, it made it a lot easier. And so now I am who I am, not because I want to go to hell or I'm fearful of going to, 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 not because I'm fearful of going to hell or I want to go to heaven or I want God to be nice to me or whatever it is. I'm who I am because I'm, I am who I am. And I do it for the reasons, for the right reasons. I do it because it's the right thing to do. 
Um, you know, I, I've been having a debate uh, on my TikTok, uh, I think it's TikTok or Instagram, what I'm channel with a pastor, uh, and we're going back and forth. And his whole evidence for the existence of God is the fact that human beings sin, right? And that we, through our so called evolution, we've not been able to stop sinning. And I said to him, the evolution of human beings has absolutely nothing to do with sin. Sin is an act or a behavior that, depending on the context, uh, uh, it can be deemed as good or bad, harmful or not harmful. It is religion, uh, the Abrahamic religions, that said that some of these things would, is what's called a sin. So sin does not exist outside of the Abrahamic religions. Sin does not exist in communities where there is no religion or a totally different practice of religion. Sin did not exist in our ancestral home in Africa for our ancestors. So is it something that was made of, I think somebody mentioned earlier that, that religion is really a, a control, it was created to control people. Um, I, 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 through my research, what I believe about religion is that religion, first of all, at the early at its earliest stages, started off as answers, uh, as an attempt to answer things that we could not answer, right? And then once people realized that they could use it to control people's behavior, then I think it became something that a tool to control to to to, uh, to, to control people. So uh, again, deconstructing. Those of you, just a word of advice, if you can get beyond the whole hell is real, because it isn't, uh, there are even uh, podcast videos about uh, Catholic priests admitting that hell is a made up country. And so uh, research those and you can see that, but there's a ton of books out there about you know, how we got hell, the origins of hell uh, and hell not being real. So that was the first thing I had to do. Uh, reasonable comments. Um, Jay Shine Randoms, uh, Peace Family. What's going on, Rob? How you doing? Good, good, good to have you. Uh, let's see, who, what else we have? The dude, when we are in a situation of desperation with nobody to turn to, we say, we say not a soul. I also found when researching the Bible from the Hebrew, found that is also what the ancient Jews believed as well. Uh, when we are in a situation of desperation with nobody to turn to, we said not a soul. Uh, I don't understand what you, what do you mean by that? Uh, this is almost, if I'm, it, it, it sounds like this is almost like the uh, no atheist in a foxhole thing, meaning that believers will often say whenever non-believers are desperate or, you know, in fear of their life, they will turn to uh, belief in God or whatever. Uh, you know, people on a plane, you got non-believers on a plane and the plane is getting ready to crash. Their belief, believers' belief is that these non-believers will call out to God. Uh, that's been proven that that's not true in all cases. And in many cases, those individuals who've never been exposed to religion or God uh, won't do that. Uh, that. Now, there are some people who have maybe, who was indoctrinated in religion for a long period of their life, uh, depending on what stage of, of deconverting deconversion that they're in, this may this may happen. Uh, but even if it happens, that's not going to change the result. There are many believers who have died in plane crashes and been killed in war, who've prayed and begged and asked their God to save them, and it didn't happen. So that's kind of an irrelevant point. Uh, if your point is that, that, you know, even if I believe something, that belief doesn't make it real. <laughs> regardless of what it is. So that doesn't really change. If, if that's the point that you're making, then you can kind of clarify the point that you're making. Your second part of what you said, uh, the dude, is you also found when researching the Bible from the Hebrew, uh, found that is also what the ancient Jews believed as well. And that means absolutely nothing to me. Uh, <laughs> what, a, what a person in a belief system believes doesn't make it real at all whatsoever. Um, there are people who practice Hindu. Hinduism, they have over 300 gods. Uh, do you believe that all of those gods are real or any of those gods are real? Even if somebody who practices a, a, a Hindu come to you and say, this God is real, and it's because I've read it in my scriptures, in my book, uh, that doesn't make it real, right? 
So because Jews did it, you know, uh, 3,000 years ago for that, whatever, uh, doesn't make it real. Uh, it's that That's what you call a circular argument. You can't prove the Bible with the Bible. Uh, that's like me telling you that at 53 years old and with a uh, 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 every so often back pain that I can run a 4 two forty, right? If you don't believe me, ask me. So, you, you know, if there's money on the line, you're going to ask me to prove it to you that I can run a 4 two forty. Well, obviously I can't. I mean, no one, I mean, unless you, you know, even the best athletes, <laughs> Only a few people on the planet can run a 4240. Certainly not a 53 year old man with a with an aching back. So uh, so again, the whole the whole circular argument because the Bible said it or Hebrews practice or Jews practiced it some time ago, it's really it's not evidence of anything factual or it doesn't validate the information. Uh, all it validates is that somebody thought that it was really put it in a book. Uh, so, so we're good with that, but uh, absolutely, uh, the dude. Any, any, any other comments are more than welcome. Thank you, uh, Stephanie. I am entertaining the idea of reincarnation. Uh, my wife believes in reincarnation. She believes that uh, we. It, she believes that we that, that we've been here before, or we yeah we've existed before, and that uh, some of us have to continue to come back uh, until we until we learn what we're supposed to learn. Uh, there are other people out there, uh, not necessarily of the Buddhist uh, of, uh, belief system, but there's other people who say stuff like, uh, what is it? Uh, deja vu is an example of us being reincarnated or being, uh, or being here, here before. Uh, again, it's one of those spiritual things that I don't really take a side in. I listen to you know to my wife and other people who may believe this. I say it's possible. I don't know. Again, we don't know everything. Um, and, and there's really no way of ever proving that is one of those un, uh, falsifiable things. It's, it's unfalsifiable. You can't prove that it's not true. Um, so, yeah. So uh, but I think that the whole idea of it and the whole study of it is really interesting. Uh, you know, where did we come from before? Where were we before? Were we other human beings? Were we animals? Were we plants? Did we exist prior on a different planet in a different universe in a different solar system uh are we is this our last stop are we coming back again and are we coming back as what whatever so i think it's really 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 interesting and so i encourage you absolutely um i you know like i said my, my wife she believes in in, in uh in re in reincarnation uh so beige uh let's see Stephanie said uh salute brother Thank you, thank you, thank you, uh, Jay Shine Randall. Thank you so much. Uh, let's see, Stephanie again said, "Like not a soul in sight." Uh, not sure what that is. Uh, Bay's Price. I've heard the phrase "one can entertain an idea without accepting it." So I like your phrasing on the on that, Stephanie or McGuire. Uh, you said, "Yeah, phrase entertaining an idea of not accepting." It. Yeah, you know what? I and, and I that's to me that's called learning. It's, it's, it's being open to hearing about other people's experiences, their beliefs, their, their lives. Uh, it doesn't necessarily, they're not trying to convert you. You're not going to get converted. But I think that we do ourselves a disservice when we don't, when we're not open minded, open minded enough to at least hear other people's sides. Uh, you know, really quick, my, uh, I have a 24 year old niece. Uh, my sister is a, is a very devout, devout Christian still. That's how we grew up. But she's a very, very devout Christian. And obviously, she's taught her kids, my, my 30-year-old nephew, my 24-year-old niece, to be the same way. About three months ago, my niece, my niece and my nephew both know how I am about religion and my feelings on it. Um, and it's really not an issue. They just, you know, we have some some humorous moments at times, but that, that's about it. But about three three months ago, my my niece called me and she said, "Uncle, Uncle, I, I met a, a a lady who says that she was a witch," and I just found it to be so interesting. I'm not gonna convert to being a witch. I'm I'm still a Christian, but I just thought it was interesting. But she said you were the only person that I could call because when I briefly mentioned it to my mother, she shut it down and said, "Don't talk to her. It's demonic." About you know all the things that you hear from Christians who are so protective and so fearful of anything that's not biblical or whatever, right? 
And I said to my niece, I said, listen, listen, I think it's absolutely awesome that you've met somebody of a different belief system and that you're willing to understand and listen and hear her and hear her talk about her belief system. I said, absolutely. It doesn't mean that you're going to convert, but you are entertaining the idea and you're learning. So now you can hold a conversation with somebody. Oh, that subject comes up. You're not like totally lost. And it's just good to know as much as you can know. I am a, I am a proponent for continuously learning regarding what, regardless of what the subject is. And so I was very proud of her for doing that. So yeah, absolutely. We can entertain a different belief system uh, and not become a part of it. And I think that's just part of life and that's part of maturity. So absolutely. Uh, the dude, what I mean by that is uh, when people get asked if they have a person to go to for help, they would normally say not a soul. Uh, not saying that has anything <laughs> to with a good, uh, not saying it has anything to do with a God, though. Oh, okay. Uh, I, I think that's more of one of those uh, uh, phrases that's been passed down through through the generation uh, with, 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 with all of us. I, I'm not sure there's anything uh, practical behind that other than just the same. But I appreciate it. I also agree. Uh, I agree something from a religion text is a proof of anything. Uh, because anything religious is faith based, and that gay, and that goes for Christians, Jews, Muslims, Hindus, pagans, or any other religion. Oh, we can absolutely agree, agree, agree with that. Uh, the dude, I am so happy that you're here. I, I've been asking for somebody to come on here um, with you know with a different take on things, so we can have engaged in these conversations. Because this is not about I'm right, you wrong. This is about all of us learning and create a platform that we can come to and learn without feeling bad or without someone, you know, feeling, you know, getting their feelings hurt or whatever. But it's a it's a platform where we can learn because I, I'm still learning and I and, and I hope that all of us out there are, are, are still learning as well. So trust me when I say I appreciate you so much for being here and please continue to come. Uh, Sharon, Sharon F said, my husband believes in reincarnation. Um, I'm exploring that with him. It's an interesting research. Uh, Sharon, I, I encourage that 100%. My, you'd be surprised that the stuff that my wife and I uh, read and talk about, she is, like I said, she's into Buddhism, but she's also into a lot of the other Eastern uh, uh, religions, uh, some Hindu, Taoism, uh, 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 Confucianism. And because I'm studying religion, uh, I'm into all of that too from the standpoint of just a, a, a purely uh, uh, informative, from an information standpoint. I want to know where it started, why, you know, the, the players in it, uh, it's it's growth around the world. Uh, some of his belief systems, the gods that they worship or whatever. So yeah, so we have some of the most interesting conversations about religion, spirituality, faith, uh, because we come from all over. And, and as I, I might have mentioned before, my wife was originally born into the Muslim faith. So she was Muslim for about 20 years and then she was Christian for about another 10 years. Uh, and um, another 10 plus years and then we both kind of walked away from uh, religion uh, at the same time and now she's Buddhist but it works for her it, it makes her feel good it's uh it's practical for her it it, it hits it, it it hits all of her bells uh I have no issue whatsoever I love the fact that she's learning this stuff and practicing it 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 it, it she uses it to kind of manage me <laughs> because uh, at times she needs to stay calm when I'm kind of erratic. And so she uses what she's learning to kind of manage me and help me to stay to stay calm. Uh, we we uh, run a business and just life itself. So a lot of times I am not the most, um, I, I, I am a person who is uh, perpetually on level 10. Uh, and she is a very, very calming force in my life. And some of that uh, now is due to what she's practicing, what she's learning from the Buddhist uh, religion. So I'm 100% appreciative of that and what she's doing. And from a practical standpoint, it actually helped her uh, get through a real difficult time uh, in our life. So uh, so again, I'm appreciative of that and for what she's doing with that. So definitely, I encourage that. Uh, I encourage you and your husband, you and your mate to, to, to do this together and grow together. Doesn't mean that you guys are going to end up at the same place. Uh, but at least take the journey together 
because we we need some. I need somebody to bounce stuff off. I I go to my wife after this is over, and she'll say, "Well, how was it? What did you guys talk about?" And we'll talk, and we'll bounce some ideas off. She'll read some stuff in a book that she's reading because we both reading two or three books at the same time, and and I tell her some stuff that I uh, oh on my audio book listen to the gym today, or or she'll tell me a podcast that she saw. So the journey together is 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 uh, awesome. It's awesome. So continue to do that. Um, Sharon, education is key growth. Yeah, yeah. I love looking at comparative uh, uh, mythology. Uh, absolutely, it's 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 exciting to me. I mean, we learn a little bit in school. You know, we learn about uh, Zeus and Apollo. And then, if you guys were fortunate enough, you may have learned about some of the Egyptian gods and uh, that kind of stuff. But to be an adult and to, to really understand it, and to really research it and, and do the study it on your own and kind of pull in, you know stuff that you missed in school is, is awesome. So I love it. I love it. Uh, good evening. Uh, Eva Boutique Emporium. Good to have you. I was wondering where you were, but glad to have you here with us. Uh, Bay said hello to you. Stephanie McGuire, LOL. I'm constantly telling my hubby, breathe. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know if that's a bad thing, but we, uh, but you know, we're not, because I think people kind of say it's stereotypical for us to believe that women are um, emotional, uh, more so emotional than men. I think that um, I think we all have our triggers. Um, for me, it's it's like only one or two things. It's always around money or business uh, that kind of triggers me. Uh, so uh, yeah, my wife is always like, "Okay, calm down, slow down. You know, everything don't have to get done today." Uh, I'm a stickler for time. I am a very regimented person. I've never been in the military. I just I was raised by a mother who was so strict about everything. Like she was so strict about everything. I guess I've carried it into my adult life. I'm a very regimented person. I you know I set a time. I've got to do this, 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 and this. Uh, that's good on one hand, but it's not so good on the other hand at times. So yeah, so it's kind of like that. But uh, yeah, so I appreciate your <laughs> your husband, Stephanie. Uh, it's like a, a really good dude. Uh, the dude, I've been, uh, and then you stopped, so I didn't see that. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, unless I missed it. Um, and then Sharon, hello. Oh, she said she said hello. So again, so we're talking about uh, deconversion. Um, and again, there's two types of deconversions, in my opinion. You, you, take, you got one from the church. So you got people who are just leaving the church because they're just fed up with things that happen in the church. I mean, you hear about stuff all the time, you, you know, Creflo Dollar and uh, you know, some of the other churches, some of the other popular ministers, but you know, across, but even your, your local church, there are things that happen in your church that you, that you're like, okay, I'm just, I'm just done with this church. You know, whether it's the politics or whether it's, you know, cricket stuff going on or, or illegal things that you see or immoral things that you see within that particular church. A lot of times people will just leave the church, but they're still believers. They, they're, they still believe in God or, or, or some form of God or Jesus as their savior whatever. And so that's one form of deconversion. Well, I'm just leaving the church. I'm not, and I, I, and I know a ton of, I, some of the most devout people that I know no longer attend church. My mother-in-law, who is extremely devout, no longer attends church uh, for a lot of the reasons that I mentioned earlier, but she is extremely, extremely devout and her belief in God is unwavering. She would never, never, ever not be a believer. And we're good. And she follows, she sees all of my, my Facebook posts and stuff. She never makes a comment, her or, or my father-in-law. They never comment on any of it. But they know. Uh, but it is what it is. We, I've been married to their daughter for 17 years now, 16 years now. So, so we're good. But uh, uh, but yeah, and so, and so the second form of deconverted is, is what I actually did was deconverted from the faith, deconverted from my belief in a God or a deity. Uh, and that one is a lot more difficult, especially if you're open about it, uh, like I have been. Uh, again, I grew up in Alabama uh, in the 70s and 80s, so it was extremely uh, difficult. Uh, I got a lot, a lot of pushback. Uh, I got people who, I mean, I've, I've got you know, threats. God is going to kill you. You're going to burn. Um, I've had people who are literally not just unfriend me on Facebook, but just self uh, literally unfriended me. And we and we have been friends for 30 plus years or 40 years. And they was like, I'm done with you. I don't want everything to say to you. I'm done. Uh, so I went through all of that. Uh, but I wanted to be open and out there because it was something that I truly believed in. A lot of us, most of us have something that we're passionate about that we believe in. Mine just happened to be uh, not being a believer anymore. And so 
given my personality, I've been open about, I was open and, and upfront about my uh, political views about certain stuff. I am a very, very uh, pro-black, not anti-white, but a very, very pro-black guy. And so I'm open about that. I, I check people. I check my friends who are non-black, who step across the line. I check them each and every time. Uh, they still love me, but they know how I am. And so, so if I'm gonna be open about that, I'm gonna be very open about anything else. And that's just how I, that's just how I move as a person in life. So, so yeah. So I've gotten all kind of threats, and I've lost friends. And um, you know, my wife has had friends who've seen my Facebook posts, and all of a sudden, she don't hear from those friends anymore. Uh, and so we've gone through all of that. So it is very difficult. Plus the emotion behind it. Uh, I've told a story about my mother before she passed, how she's, you know, said some really harmful things about my wife and I when we left the church, uh, about our business failing and, and basically wishing that it would fail if that would bring us back to Jesus. And it was kind of uh, a conflict. It was kind of weird because we were financially supporting her <laughs> at the time. And that was our only source of it. It was, it was our only source of income. And so it was kind of weird that you would that you would see your blood, your child suffer. And in the process, you suffer if it meant that we would come back and, and become believers again, which I just, it was, you know, I was, I, it was not unexpected. Uh, my wife was really angry. Uh, and it, was, it shocked me a little bit because uh, my mother had always shown a, a bit of reverence toward me, being the, the oldest child and the first to go to college and all of that. She had always had this kind of reverence. She never argued with me, never really, you know, never, but her and my sister went at it all the time. Uh, plus, she respected my opinion a lot because I was always the kind of in between. I told I would tell each of them when they were wrong or, or right or whatever. Uh, but when it came to this whole religion thing and God, she kind of did a, a whole 180 on me. Uh, but yeah, and so I dealt with that. So, you know, you deconvert from the church, you deconvert from the faith. Uh, like I said before, I deconverted from the faith. Uh, there are there were resources that I went to, a podcast that I listened to all the time. Uh, there's one called The Atheist Experience. This is a, a guy who was who is, uh, I will warn you, he is not, he's kind of rude, rude. Some of you would think he's rude. His name is Matthew uh, Dillahoney. He's an ex, uh, ex-pastor, member of the church, but he's been doing this um, uh, atheist experience uh, uh, podcast for about 15, 20 years now. I think he's out of Texas somewhere. Uh, but he talks about his experience. He talks about deconverting a lot, but he talks about some other issues too. Uh, there are people, uh, there are uh, African-Americans like, uh, uh, Jeremiah Camaro, who I'm trying to get on, on this podcast, who who has a, a podcast, who has, who has movies and uh, documentaries about leaving religion as well. Uh, there's an organization here in Atlanta called Black Non Believers by uh, read by Bandisa Thomas. Uh, I think there's other branches. Uh, so she's there, there's organizations like that out there. Uh, uh, so I can't remember her first name. Her last name is Hutchison. Uh, she's out on the West Coast. Uh, some Shavika, Savika Hutchison. I don't want to mispronounce her first name, but it's S. Hutchinson. She's written a bunch of books. Uh, she's out on the West Coast. She's part of an organization uh, for non-believers. And so there are many, 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 many others. There are authors like uh, Penn, P-E-N-N. -E -N. I forgot his first name. He's from uh, Buffalo, New York. Uh, he's a professor at Rice uh, University out in Texas. Uh, he's a humanist. Uh, he's an atheist, but he's a humanist. Uh, he's written a lot of stuff. Uh, he's an African American uh, br uh, a brother. Uh, and so there's plenty of stuff. There's plenty of uh, resources that you can go to and read. There's a ton of books, and uh, I'm going to start bringing some of the books that I've read that helped me. But but all you got to do is Google uh, non-convert, uh, black non-believers, uh, deconverting. There's a ton of podcasts, a ton of uh, uh, there's a ton of documentaries out there, a ton of books that you can read. And, and then there's platforms like this you can come to and be around people who are of like mind. And you can get, you know, you can get the insight from those individuals who have gone on that journey or in the process of going on that journey. Uh, so, yeah. So let's see what else uh, before we wrap it up. We get these last uh, comments in. Uh, you say, uh, the dude said, I'm still, let me go back up to where. Oh, I have. Oh, I missed a lot of comments. Okay, let me go back up to see Sharon F. Uh, January 6th. Let's see. Okay, the last one. Dave's price. I think the January 6th, we can drop women are more emotional. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, we could have dropped it a long time ago. That's just some, you know, a lot of that, again, is um, if you trace it back far enough, it's from a religious standpoint as well. So, again, 
just another reason as to why we need to just do away with religion altogether. But yes, um, Sharon Evans said deconversion from the church, then deconversion from certain people in your space. Uh, yep, I totally agree with that as, as well. The dude, looking into a lot of ancient religions from all over the, all over the globe lately, uh, the Americas, Africa, Europe, uh, so on, and there are so many uh, religions that have uh, very similar stories to the Bible. Uh, the dude, I, I'll, I'll tell you, and I, and I, I mean, I have done exhausted uh, research in this area. Uh, uh, you see my book. I, I wrote a book. It's called uh, "From Save to Save: My Journey Away from Christianity uh, and Why Christianity Has Been Detrimental to the African American Community." It's available on Amazon. I'm plugging that down because in writing the book, I had to do a ton of research, and I've done a, a ton since and a lot before that. And um, the one thing that you said is one hundred percent true is that. There are many, 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 many similar stories to the Christian story, the Jesus story that predate Jesus and Christianity, that predate Jesus and Christianity. I'm doing my uh, Dr. Umar uh, impression that predate Christianity and Jesus. Right. Uh, and so if people would just read and understand that uh, there is nothing in the Bible that's original absolutely nothing in the Bible that's original. And so you, you did it. Continue to do your reading. Continue to do your your your, uh, your research. Uh, and you will find that more and more of that is true. Uh, he said, I'm still looking into theories why these stories are so similar. And I've heard some interesting takes. Uh, well, I, I'll give you a take. I'll give you my, my take. Uh, a lot of the religions were started in the same place, in the same general uh, geographic uh, vicinity of each other. So it is almost impossible to not have that influence, right? If, you know, uh, Zoroaster, uh, Zoroaster, why am I not pronouncing that right? But it's an earlier religion, uh, Zoroaster, Zoroaster, you guys, Z-O-R-A, I think, um, and then the rest of it. but. Anyway, research that, <laughs> and I'm sorry, I can't even pronounce that today. I don't know what's wrong with me. But anyway, it's a, it's a religion that was started in Persia, uh, that region, but it influenced Judaism, Christianity, all the other ones. Hinduism, if you look, the Middle East and um, the Southern Asia, India, all that part, all that stuff was kind of in the same region, right? And so a lot of those took the same influence. Also, these some of these religions that 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 predated these other religions by centuries, obviously somebody knew about those religions and they, you know, word of mouth told these stories and in other civilizations created gods around around these the, the, the stories. That's practical, that makes sense, that's natural, that's what happens. Uh, and that's why you have uh, Christianity that was influenced by so many other religions, uh, mostly in the same general region. Uh, and so you can take that for what it's worth, but also please, please do your, do your research and come back and let me know what you came up with. Um, so I said, uh, Bayes Price says, say to say, do you know the Afro humanist Esther uh, would be great for you? to have a chat with, uh, get your subscribe count up. You, I do need to get my subscribe. Uh, where, where is, uh, where is, uh, Taisha? Taisha's trying to help me to get my, my subscription count up. But yeah, I will reach out to her. Uh, her name is Esther. Oh yeah. The Afro humanist. She was actually on here, um, uh, a few weeks ago. Uh, and I, 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 I've looked at some of her videos. They are all long. They're like two hours, uh, <laughs> two, two plus hours long, but Excellent information. I love her format. I love the way she, she, she does her videos. So yeah, I'm probably going to have her on here, but she was actually uh, in the chat box a few weeks ago. We were talking about a subject and uh, uh, absolutely. So yeah, uh, I did not know her name, Esther. I knew the, the Afro humanist and I think I actually subscribed to her channel. So yeah, so I need to do that. Uh, Stephanie, thank you so much. Uh, Zori Astor, and, and I'm probably still saying it wrong. I've said this word so many times before in the past. <laughs> uh, but I, I briefly talk about uh, this faith in, in my book when I talk about uh, some of the other stuff I talked about. But yeah, absolutely. It's one of the earlier uh, faiths. It's, it's Persia. It's from that part of the, of, the, of, the, of the world. You'll be surprised how Judaism, which eventually gave away, I mean, it's 
Judaism and then you got Christianity, which came from Judaism in part. Um, you'd be surprised how much of the influence of that religion uh, was on Judaism and Christianity, or Christianity and Judaism getting their influence from that religion. Um, so you'll be surprised. It's, it is a lot. Uh, you and, and, and not just, but some of the, the foundational pieces to Christianity and Judaism came from that religion. You will be surprised once you do your research on that. So absolutely, thank you for that, Steph. You, you saved me. I, I kind of feel uh, in a bad way that I could not get that <laughs> get that out. Um, but anyway, the dude. Uh, I've also found that traditions we think of as Jewish traditions are not even original to Judaism but are actually common uh, Mesopotamian traditions. Uh, Jews, Christian, Muslims don't agree, uh, though. Uh, yeah, because they want to they want to say that their religion is somehow originally came from you know God, but Mesopotamia, uh, uh, Syrian, uh, all those other uh, 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 civilizations, communities, and practices over there all just blended. Uh, and like I said before, there are those that are much, much older, including uh, Egyptian uh, mythology that a lot of stuff also came from as well. So, yeah, uh, so it's interesting. It's really interesting. And the one thing that our people don't don't do enough of is, is read, especially outside of the Bible. Um, for whatever reason, we're, we've been told that we should read other stuff outside the Bible. It's demonic. It's bad. It's the, the way the devil gets into you, all this other kind of stuff in an attempt to keep us from reading stuff outside of the Bible. Um, and so if we did a better job of reading stuff outside of the Bible, we'll have a completely different outlook on life, a completely different take, not only on just life, but on our religious beliefs as well. Uh, and so we don't really understand the foundation and the origins of what we believe, why we believe it. We hear it from a pastor or a teacher and we we take it in and then we regurgitate it out to our kids and their kids and their kids instead of doing the research, that which, which is what we should be doing. So I appreciate that. Uh, it is be the last word. Beige, uh, Beige Price said, the dude made me chuckle. I found religious tend to slam the ones that he, they evolved from. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Because it's, you know what? And, and, and because what happens is that the, the newer religion always actually as if they are an improvement of the previous religion that they came from, right? Christianity and Judaism is a, is a, is a perfect example, right? Uh, even within Christianity, you got Catholicism and Protestant, right? So uh, the uh, Catholics or Catholicism was first, but Protestants claim to be an improvement uh, Catholicism. I think Catholicism still rules <laughs> the Christian faith, but so then you take Christian from Judaism, it's the same thing. You know, Christians believe that they're in a, somehow an improvement of Judaism, right? And so, yeah, you're absolutely right. That's kind of how, and even if you go to the Asian uh, religions, uh, uh, I mean, I'm sorry, the, the, the Eastern religions, um, uh, you know, Hindu and then Confucianism and Buddhism all kind of came from, now they don't, they don't bash each other as much as the Western religions do, but they all kind of act like as if they may be an improvement of the previous one where they came from. So yeah, so that's that's a good point. Um, do it improve by now. Good. So guys, uh, this has been awesome. I thank you so much for joining me. Please invite your friends. Please invite people to subscribe. I'm going to keep doing this uh, even if it's 250 subscribers or I don't know how many I have now. I don't, uh, you know, I need more and more, but I'm going to continue to do this. Uh, at some point, we'll be up enough to where um, a lot of people are hearing us. Uh, so I'm going to continue. So invite your friends to subscribe. You guys, please come back. Join us next week. We'll have a different topic, a new topic. And I love, love, love the input. Continue with the input. Um, the dude, please come back. I love the the, the different uh, take on things. I love it. Please come back. I welcome all of you come back. Uh, last comment from the dude saying Christians say that Jews and Muslims are uh, legalists. I don't uh, I don't know what that means. Uh, it just means that they are a lot more rigid in their beliefs. I think that's that's what it means. My understanding of it is that they uh, Christians believe that Jews and Muslims are a lot more rigid in their beliefs. Uh, most of the Muslims, I if I had to compare uh, uh, my Muslim Muslim friend uh, to my Christian friends. I would say that uh, my Muslim friends take their faith a, a lot more serious than my Christian friends do. 
Uh, there are much more by the book of you can't, you can't do this, da 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 da, and so forth. So at least that's been my experience when I, you know, weigh the difference between my Muslim friends and my Christian friends. Uh, that is, that's kind of been my uh, beliefs in that. And I think that's what uh, Christians be when they say that. But yeah, uh, Baze, thank you so much. Cheers, everyone. Thank you, uh, Stephanie. I uh, said, so nice of you to read all the chats. Oh, I love it. I think it's great. This is, this is, it's just, just not me. This is us communicating with each other. We all can help each other. We all have information that we all can use. And I love for us to share that information uh, because again, I'm learning. We all are learning. Uh, none of us uh, have a monopoly on knowledge. Uh, we can share what we've learned. That's what we need to do and always need to do as a community. Uh, whatever, how we identify the community, this is a community and we need to continue to share information. So uh, I'm appreciative that you guys spend your hour with me on here. Um, uh, feedback and the questions and the comments, I love it. So I think it, it'd be a disservice if I didn't try to get to as many of them as I can. So yeah, I love it. Thank you guys so much. Uh, I really enjoyed the conversation today. So did I. Thank you, Sharon. Uh, it's been really good. Thank you, guys. I thank you again, Baze Price. So thank all of you, the dude, Baze Price, Sharon. Who else? Uh, I got to go up the list. Let's see. Who else? I know Taisha's still out there. Thank you, Taisha. Stephanie, thank you. Uh, who else do we have? Uh, uh, let's see. I know it's Eva Boutique, thank you so much. Uh, again, I said the dude, uh, JS, uh, J Shine, Randoms, thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, and everybody who joined, hopefully I didn't miss anybody. Who was the first, I think the first person after uh, I was sharing? Okay. Oh, uh, let's see. Tron 7000. Thank you. So thank all of you. Enjoy the rest of your week. Enjoy your weekend. And I will see you again here next Wednesday at 5 o'clock.